Welcome to Nerd Alert, everyone. We have a super science-packed show this week because I am joined by two strong hitters in the science world, a biologist and writer for Conservation Magazine, Scientific American, much more, and also the host of the Wildlife Podcast, Jason Goldman. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Thank you for having it's, me. It's Dr. Jason Goldman. It is. He worked hard for that. Dr. Jason Goldman. Don't forget the doctorate. And Dr. No, I didn't work hard enough. Friend <laughs> Phil Torres, uh, who is the host of Techno on Al Jazeera America and also an entomologist and naturalist. Mm -hmm. Our first story this week uh, comes from SpaceX, in which they had attempted to fly a shuttle and rocket to the ISS and return it. Uh, it was partially successful in a few ways. Uh, so it had been able to bring 5,000 pounds of cargo to the ISS successfully, uh, but when we tried to return the rocket, it actually had gone in the correct trajectory, but ended up hitting too hard and crashed. And some are calling this a failure, but it seems to be more successful than I could have hoped, at least. Yeah, I mean, to call that a failure is ridiculous. They accomplished so much in that they delivered the cargo, which is more than the last rocket was able to do. Mm -hmm. And then trying to land this thing, it was on an autonomous spaceport ship floating in the Atlantic Ocean. How cool is that 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 even exists? Yeah. There's just a ship out there that's waiting for a rocket to land on it. Like that's, that alone is amazing. And mm -hmm. they got close and I loved Elon Musk's take on it. He just said, you know what, we'll try again, put more hydraulic fluid, that was their big problem. The fans problem. were lacking hydro hydraulic fluid toward the end is what they figured like, out. It, so it was like four minutes more. short or something. 50% more they're adding next time. Yeah. So hopefully that will work out. So usually what happens on these, uh, when the, we, we end up losing uh, the, the rocket and the fluids and what have you. So is this a worthy endeavor to try and recover it? I think they're, they're basically just trying to cut costs here. Mm -hmm. And the cheaper that space exploration becomes, the more we can do it and the more astronauts we could send up my chances become better of you know, getting up there one of these days. There we go. Um, but some other people are saying that basically these rockets aren't the entire cost. They're only about a third of the cost, so is it worth it? They seem to think it is. Is there any environmental impact to this? Well, clearly there is, but is it a, a great, what is the measure of it? Well, I mean, the truth is that historically the, the rockets and boosters and all those other things used to just fall off um, after, after the uh, rocket would you know, escape um, the Earth's pull. Um, and they would burn up in the atmosphere or fall into the ocean, and that basically becomes litter, right? Really, really expensive, Large. really expensive litter. Um, so the fact that we're trying to recover these things and reuse them um, uh, it, it is, I think, on balance, an environmental benefit. Um, we're still putting lots of you know, fuel into the environment and that kinds of things. But. It's interesting to see that this is happening from SpaceX um, as opposed to perhaps NASA or uh, some other nations. Uh, own space program. Now why are we seeing it from them, a privatized space company? I just think it's in their nature. They've always been competitive. They've always been trying to do that thing that nobody else has done. Mm -hmm. And they really want this to be commercially viable. They want to prove time and time again that they should get the contract from the government because they're doing everything they can to make this cheaper and to make this innovative and to get to the job done. Right. And let's be clear, you know, is it, a lot of the news outlets are calling it a failure but they still managed to get it to hit its target, like this tiny little floating thing in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, right? It just came down a tiny bit too fast. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you're hitting the bullseye, you're just kind of going the through the bullseye, <laughs> which is still really, really um, impressive, I think. Well, there's a scientific definition of failure, which is uh, maybe, maybe a misnomer. Well, in, you know, in, in science and in engineering, uh, there's a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in the case of you know, space exploration, a lot of times error is a bad thing either because there are lives involved and certainly because there's lots of money involved. And it's explosive. It, it looks like an error. <laughs> right. It's it a big explosion. It certainly looks like an error. But, but um, you know, we, we have some data from how this uh, went wrong, how it went a little bit too fast, and there are already ideas, like you said, um, for, for making it work better next time, putting more of the hydraulic fluid in the fins. So we will see how that goes next time. What do you think, audience? Would you consider this uh, a failure, a step? Let us know below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe.